from my grandfather, the late Johnny Daniels, the Salmona. I'm a member of the Cowards and Tribes. And I'm really glad to see each and every one of you here. Heitzka. You know, our people have been fighting terrorism since the 1400s. the Europeans came over to our land, we welcomed them. And the terrorists murdered of our people. We offered them. They were the first welfare bombs that came and they landed on shore. Mark, but not to paint the picture black, there was a lot of good Europeans that came over to this country. They supported our people, they helped our people. My grandfather was an immigrant from Denmark. Their culture is very similar to ours. And he lives with our people. And he helped and supported our people. 
You know, I really have to question the mentality of Harper. <laughs> saying a number of times that Harper, he's the worst radicalist and terrorist in this country as far as I'm concerned. To raise my hand to Randall, Nathan Cullen, Mern Ranky, Franken, for their support. I spoke with the legislature a year or so ago. I said, you know, it doesn't matter who gets into that house. When they get in there, we're still fighting. And it's time. I call on the NDP. If they get in that house, don't turn your backs on us. Don't turn your backs on Canada. Or BC. Do something right for a change. I hate to think the chief little boy. My children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren are going to have to grow up when Harper tries to push this kind of thing. You look at the states, day after day after day, posting after posting after posting. The police are just shooting people for no real reason. Kids, elders, and it's getting just as bad in Canada here with the the police force is doing in this country. A lot of you don't seem to realize that the Bill C-51 it's already implemented very quietly and subtly. There were some people that took some pictures of the Burnaby Mountain and the RCP went there and took the lady out of the house and held the detained her for hours, questioning her. And I think it was uh, somebody from the UVic took, took a picture. Now he's under investigation. So you got to realize that Bill C-51 is actually working now. The police for years and years they've been spying on us. Harper's called the military <coughs> to monitor us. What's gonna happen? So it's already working. It's time for your people, all races, red, black, yellow, white, to stand up to this country and say enough is enough. Thank you, Rose. Thank you to the Songs people, Heichka. And thank you, Randall Garrison, for the fight. I'm yeah. glad. Yeah. You know, this is a great example of what politics can be. I am so glad that Thomas Mulcair joined Elizabeth May in saying this bill has to stop. voting against this bill. And now we need to convince the Liberals to vote against this bill. I think we can show Canadians what happened. 
happens when parties work together for the good of the country. And this is a chance to do that. It is good that we are all here. I have to say, your being here gives me such hope. I think we know who we are as Canadians, and Bill C-51 is not it. Just imagine, as Randall said, if we had gathered here today and someone had forgotten to get a permit, we would then be subject to Bill C-51 because it would be an unlawful protest. Some of you could be labeled as terrorists. All of us could have our information shared with internal revenue and with travel. We could end up on a no-fly list and never know why. Just because we stood up for our rights and to maintain our belief in privacy in this country. So thank you for saying that's not going to wash. you to know what's in this bill. Last Monday, I decided I would take the day off and read Bill C-51 so I knew what we were talking about. It's heavy going, but honest to goodness, if I was scared before I read the bill, I was terrified by the time I finished it. You could drive a Mack truck through some of the clauses in this bill. And, you know, hundreds of academics, you know, five former uh, privacy officers and four former prime ministers and three intelligence committee members and, and two former heads of state have all said this is a bad, bad bill. So I'm sure if the partridge in the pear tree could talk, it would join the chorus. <laughs> is to reject this bill and defeat this government. You know, this bill won't make us safer. We don't need this bill. What we need are solutions. We need solutions to radicalization and terrorism. And what are those solutions? Well, let me give you just three. One, we need to provide resources to the RCMP and CSIS. We don't need laws that take away our privacy and our rights. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two, we need to work with the Muslim community. And we need to stop. Thank you. Because that's how we stop radicalization. And finally, we need to stop the drums of war and encourage the politics of
start by saying I'm proud to be the official opposition public safety critic and to lead the opposition in the House of Commons to this bill. But we can't do it alone. We need all of you to stand with us. I want to start by thanking the organizers, and particularly Lead Now, which started this, and all the community groups that uh, got together more than 55 of these demonstrations across the country. But I'm very proud of our community because it looks like this is the largest rally in the country and certainly the largest per capita. Use both, they say. I don't know. So I have one sad thing to say at the beginning. Murray Rankin would be standing here with me today, but unfortunately his father died on Wednesday, and so he's at the services today in Toronto. So, uh, five minutes on C51. Uh, I spoke for seven hours in the House of Commons, so I'm going to have to edit just a little. But what's clear is this government does not want to have the public know what's in this bill. We had to fight hard to get up to 48 witnesses. The government first said we'll just have 18. 10 from us and 8 from the opposition. So we fought hard, did a filibuster so that we could have at least 48 Canadians before the House. But I've never been more ashamed of the House of Commons than I was this week when those witnesses began to appear. The Conservatives actually asked Greenpeace, are you or are you not a threat to national security? And then they said, sorry, no time for you to answer that. The first Muslim witness who appeared was accused of being lukewarm in his opposition to terrorism. And I have never seen a more dignified response by someone under attack from elected representatives. When Chief Terry Belgard appeared before the committee, he was lectured for five and a half minutes by the Conservatives on Aboriginal rights. And when, when we challenged that disrespect, the Conservatives said, we were glad he was here so we could explain to him. What is the purpose of these hearings? It's for the government to listen to Canadians. So this week we had our first 12 witnesses, including three government witnesses. And what happened? 12 out of 12 said this bill is a bad bill, including the government's own witnesses. Now, now let me quickly just point to three things that are really problematic in this bill. The first is the provision that would allow the government departments to share all information with each other on each and every one of us, which has nothing to do with terror. The Privacy Commissioner has said this will allow a personal profile on every Canadian to be constructed by the government. When we asked to have the Privacy Commissioner before the committee, what do you think happened? The Conservatives blocked his appearance. They don't want you to know what's in this bill. When legal experts appeared before the committee on the new disruptive powers of CSIS, they were asked, does this allow CSIS to do kidnapping, secret detentions, and rendition, which means sending people to other countries, and the answer is, this bill allows that. And when it comes to detentions, you will now be subject to detention in Canada if you are suspected that you might do something against the security of Canada. This bill must go. So we have to raise our voices all across the country. We have to make the Conservatives understand that this is a threat to their re-election, and then we have to drive them out of office.
I think the true patriots in this country are standing before me today defending fundamental freedoms, defending our way of life, and defending Canadian values. And I look forward to all of you working with me as we go forward and with all of our other allies at the community level to make sure we don't lose what's great about this nation. Thank you. Saturday. It's Sorry. beautiful oh, finally. This Sorry. is our Saturday. Big. Big. Yeah. I just want to say this has been my since January. So this is like I'm so glad you guys are all here. Um, I also want to point out I wasn't. I promised myself I was like, Sophia, don't talk. But I'm gonna talk because I'm just gonna do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I grew, up, I grew up in a different country. I was born in Serbia. At the time it was Yugoslavia. My family and I, I grew up at protests begging the government not to bomb my country. Had C-51 been passed in a, uh, before, had it been passed and had it existed when I was a kid with my family, I think we would have been in a lot of trouble. We wouldn't have been allowed to organize around anything. We weren't citizens, we didn't have a right. So I know a lot of you are here and for whatever reason, I love the community building. Sometimes it's like really cool to be at a protest. It's super radical, and I love it. But sometimes it's a form of existence. So I really want to acknowledge all of you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me get some. Laurel Collins. She's a prof at UVic. She studies social movements, which is perfect for this right now. And I love her take on Bill C-51. She's spoken at the NDP public consultation on C-51 as well. And now she's here to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I'm just so impressed at the turnout today. I want to say thank you for coming out and taking time out of your week. Okay, I'm going to say thank you for taking time out of your week to stand up for your civil liberties, for freedom of speech, for our right to assemble together, to engage in civil disobedience without falling under Bill C-51. a lot about the bill and they really outlined a lot of the issues so I was thinking instead of unpacking the details of it that I would talk a little bit about the racism that underpins and permeates the creation, the implementation, and the debate around this bill. So the Harper government has continually framed this in terms of the necessity to address Islamic extremism. And yet there has been no, little to no mention of other people engaged in other kinds of activities that are ideologically motivated. And you think of the uh, murderous misfits. This is the term that Peter McKay gave to the youth in Halifax who were planning a massacre. Now he said that these youth were not engaged in terrorism uh, because it wasn't culturally motivated. Shame. Shame. Yeah, and the, the youth actually had neo-Nazi and white power propaganda and imagery on their social, <laughs> social media website. And so I think you can just read into that culturally motivated comment, the underlying Islamophobia. And this has been constant in their discourse. And I, another instance of this Randall mentioned briefly is when a representative from the NCCM, the National Council of Canadian Muslims, came. The Conservative MP actually made slanderous and unfounded allegations when he was about to um, speak and ideally give the government some feedback on this bill. Shame. Shame. So this is just the first layer. The next one is that this bill happened without any kind of consultation of First Nations people and actually is a, a threat to their ability to organize and uh, protect their own lands and water. So not only did the government fail to consult, um, because this legislation does impact their rights and titles, uh, but
but the broad language of the bill really covers any kind of um, threat or interference to critical infrastructure, so pipelines, fracking, and our indigenous communities are, are on the front lines of these fights. with the recently leaked RCMP documents which frame indigenous activists as violent aboriginal extremists. It really shows the ease in which they're able to apply this bill across the board. And the labeling of indigenous activists is not new in terms of terrorism. This happens in colonial states all around the world. And it's a, a tactic used to delegitimize these movements. If you think about anti-apartheid movement, if we had Bill C-51 back then, Canadians who stood up and spoke in support of Nelson Mandela would actually be criminalized under the speech crime. Similarly, nowadays, if you disagree with the government's stance on Palestine, um, the, it was Safety Minister Stephen Blaney, the Conservative MP, he's actually one of the authors of this bill. He has said that there is a zero tolerance policy in Canada for people who want to support boycotts, sanctions uh, for Israel. So, <laughs> fascism, absolutely. This is uh, this just gives you a sense of some of the layers of the racism involved in this bill. And a lot of people have been asking, what comes next? What are we going to do? So in addition to writing letters to your members of parliament, writing letters to federal leaders, in addition to coming out to protests like this, continuing this conversation, um, in addition to voting in this year's election and making sure that we get our vote out. by this bill. Thank you. That we don't exist every four years when they want us to vote for them. We exist every freaking day.